everyone welcome back to my channel today i have a special guest and this is dr amanda stefan i work with her at my work here in cincinnati um so today we're going to i'm going to show her how to diamond paint with our um new paint gem the cats edition and the dogs edition she has not done this before but First, we're gonna to get to know her a little bit better. So, um, Dr. Stephen, why don't you tell us like what made you get into veterinary medicine? Yeah, so um, I was the five-year-old that wanted to be a vet and then just never grew out of that dream. So um, I guess it's interesting in that way, but uh, I just kind of kept, it was the only thing that I felt like I wanted to do with my life. So it's the one thing that I kept following and path led me uh, to get to do it. So I'm really excited about that. I feel very <laughs> blessed for it. So And here we are. Yeah. And then you recently started to go back to, um, you're taking some classes to do acupuncture for animals. Yeah. yeah so uh, veterinary acupuncture is not something that I think people, everyone always says, oh, is it something new? Uh, it's definitely not. I have instructors who have been doing this since the 80s, but it's something that I think we're getting more um, adapted to with our pets because we are getting to the point now where we're saying, oh, you know, our pets are more like family and we want to do absolutely everything we can to help them with comfort mm -hmm. and things like that. So I um, thought that, you know, acupuncture is another great modality to help with pain control and comfort and all those types of things to kind of add into our Western medicine. So my hope is kind of integrating those two things, but yeah. Yeah. So would you use that in conjunction with like um, like oral pain met management and you can also do like um, rehab pain yeah, management yeah, too? Yeah, definitely. So there are definitely some um, purists when it comes to traditional Chinese medicine where you just do that. Um, a lot of our newer information says that, you know, Traditional Chinese medicine is fantastic, but we can't ignore the fact that we have Western medicine and Western modalities now. Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of our hope is to integrate the two and use everything. So use our Western diagnoses of, you know, arthritis and use pain control and, you know, rehab and all those great things. But also in conjunction, we can use acupuncture and acupressure points to help relieve some of that um, stagnation. and. Um, nerve pain and things like that too. So I definitely appreciate the idea of like integrating those things together so that we can give our pets the best life that we can do for them. So yeah. And I know like some things led you to like um, want to pursue pain management and um, pain control and making our senior pets more comfortable in their older golden ages. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like what led you to um, yeah. get there? Yeah, so I um, have always really loved senior pets and I just, I always felt like a connection with their souls because I just feel like they're so kind and gentle and loving and they just want to, um, you know, be comfortable and be loved and I appreciated mm -hmm. that. Um, I had my own personal old dog, um, Floyd, and he, um, you know, he was the one that was supposed to live forever for me, mm -hmm. but he got brain cancer and um, we did everything we could in Western medicine to help with that. I feel like I got some results, but I, I felt like there was just something else that I should or could have wanted to do for him. So mm -hmm. with acupuncture, this is me learning that, you know, beyond Western medicine, there are potentially other things we can do to help with pain control when it is, you know, we can't give a pain medication because of some organ changes or something like that. You know, when, when we don't have that option or when, um, you know, Western medicine has reached its plateau and there's nothing else we can do, adding in that additional um, practice. So yeah. I feel like I wish I would have had that for him and I want to give that opportunity to other people with their, their soul dogs to be able to do that and cats, um, yeah. you know, to be able to have that option for them. So that's kind of where this whole thing sparked for me and I'm, I'm excited to offer that to people, so. Yeah, I think that's great. And I think that's so kind to offer that to other people too. And I think that's gonna be such a good addition. Yeah. And, but exciting. yeah, it's an exciting <laughs> chapter for you. <Yeah. laughs> uh, and I know how excited you are just about 
how how your Instagram because she is on Instagram and um, I'll link it in the description down below her Instagram channel um, if you want to go ahead and follow her if you're on Instagram too um, her name on there is senior vet pet or no senior pet what how senior what? pet vet. <laughs> yes. yeah so I'm yeah. getting it backwards you put it all in there we'll, yeah. we'll get there so. um, but she is very passionate about like pain management and um, senior pets and education for everybody and you know she gives you little quizzes too and even though I work with her I still try it and I get the answers wrong <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, let's open up these boxes I brought the cats one too for funsies even though we're mostly dog people <laughs> um, and then the dogs one to or the doggy edition as well because um, we're gonna try to do this one um, so what is in here so I'm an affiliate with uh, Paint Gem. They sent me these. Um, they let me pick out the which ones I wanted, and they sent me the cats. Oops, I know they just slide off here. There you go. <laughs> so they send you everything that you need in the box um, to get started. So if you're a first timer and you've never done this before, you don't need to purchase anything additional. They give you everything that you need. So you get a little toolkit, which Fun. comes in this bag here. And what you get in here is your um, paint, Ooh. Um, your gem applicator pen, a tray, this is the wax that it comes with, mm -hmm. um, it comes with some plastic tweezers, I don't tend to use those that often, and then there is also a comfort grip, it's kind of hard to see <laughs> in the background. But that's everything in there. But I did bring my own accessories because I do have my own that I prefer. <laughs> but you do. But if you haven't done this before, it does come with everything that you need. And then you have your diamonds, if you will, or your gems. That's really cool. Yeah. So all the colors that you need for each little painting that's in here. Okay. And then how many paintings come in one? Um. So. This one has all of these. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Yeah. So I think there's 12, or no. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Oh wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it has all these different breeds on here. And they look a little pixelated, but I think that's the point. Uh, and then they come in um, wrapped up nicely like this so if you wanted to travel with it you can and then um, it comes with a sticker sheet for your gems that you can match them up Fun. so <laughs> well that's really cute so this one's obviously the pug and if I'm wrong then it really looks like a pug, <laughs> <laughs> it definitely looks like the pug. so this is the first one I picked up and you can see, um, so here's K. Yeah. So you match it up with, um, here's K oh, right here. Okay. So the gem is in here Can and I it's gonna be that. Yep. Okay, cool. So here's the pug and then what is this? <laughs> That's the Jack Russell, yeah? Is I think so. Russell? Let's see. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a Jack Russell, that. good job. All right, so pug, Jack Russell, this is the pit, pit bull. bull. Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's show everybody. Yeah, that one. Here's the pit bull. <laughs> Boston. Uh, I think that one's. Oh, French Frenchy. bull. The French bulldog. Yeah. <laughs> Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah. Corgi. Corgi. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a quiz. <laughs> I know. Poodle. Poodle? Yeah. Doberman. Yes. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> very thin. Cocker Spaniel? Yeah. Oh, Husky, Husky. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. St. Bernard? St. Bernard, yeah. <laughs> German Shepherd. Yeah. Border uh, Collie? Collie? Let's see. Yep, Collie. Oh, Bull Terrier. Terrier. Scotty, Scotty, yeah. 
Scottish Terrier. <laughs> and Yorkie. Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> those are cute. Okay, so there's those ones. Let's open up the cats. So these ones are gonna be like actual breeds of cat. Oh, that's exciting. I'm not good with cat breeds, so this will be good for me. <laughs> it's gonna challenge you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and just like the dog one, we have our toolkit. Uh, we have our gems. This one's way more colorful, which is <laughs> surprising. And then we have our package of cats. Ooh, <laughs> maybe as good as the, uh, this one. This one's going to be difficult. <laughs> Is that the... Sphinx, maybe? Sphinx or the Oriental. Maybe the Oriental. Uh, oh, Oriental. Oh. Come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no answer key. Oh. This one's uh, cute. The, Bombay? The... Oh, Exotic. exotic? <laughs> I like it. It's real cute. <laughs> oh, British short hair, I believe. Yes. Little ears. Ooh. Maine Coon. Yes. It's a bingle. And then the Bombay. Gorgeous kitties. Ragdoll? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's a little chimera going on. That was the Angora. Angora. Yeah. Savannah? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, Savannah these people. cats eat everything, by the way. <laughs> um, which can be good and dangerous. <laughs> It's the American short hair. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's a Persian. There you go. And then the... Oh, let's see. Nibelung? Oh, I've never even heard of that. Oh, this has got to be the Sphinx. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one looks oh. like it's the... Siamese. Is it the Siamese? Yeah. Oh, oh, the Scottish Fold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then the last one is the Turkish Van. How fun. This is pretty cool. Yeah, if you are um, definitely a cat person or a dog person or you love different breeds, this is something that you probably would enjoy doing okay. or working on. And these are small enough. If you're an experienced diamond painter, um, it shouldn't take you very long. I've done these before, and they've taken me like 40 minutes to oh my do gosh. each one. That's impressive. <laughs> okay, so put the cat's one away. And then you want to do the Frenchie. I Let's do the Frenchie. <laughs> I have a Frenchie. It's my guilty pleasure dog. Yes. <laughs> Frenchie yes. for you, and I'll do the pity because, you know. Also lovely. Yes. <laughs> All right, so typically I kit up, well, kitting up is called like where you take the gems and you put it in a container and stick these stickers okay. on it, but I don't have any containers, so we're going to work out of these baggies, okay. and they already have the numbers on them, so that's how we're going to work on them and then what we're gonna do is so that we can keep I'm just gonna follow your lead here yeah okay so I'm gonna flip the camera around so you guys aren't just staring at the tops of our faces <laughs> and you can watch what we're doing so it'll be just a second for you and a few minutes for us okay so I brought um, washi tape so that these don't move and what we'll do is and it's my pit bull washi tape cute <laughs> little different noses it's cute that way it doesn't move on us Thanks. okay 
So what we're going to do is you need, I always recommend starting from like an outside okay. and then moving in. Okay. If you want to start at the top, like Z, I Z? guess. Yeah. So would I put in all the Z's and then come back through with another one? You can. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Okay. But Z is... 310. So it doesn't have like the letter on here. Oh, okay. That's why it has the stickers. Mm -hmm. So it is number three, or it's 310, which is this number yeah. here. And I have some too. So we're just going to pour a few in here. And then what you do in here is you just kind of shake it. Okay. And I tap it. Like lines them all up. Yeah, exactly. It lines them up so they flip the right way. I'm going to turn the light on for us. Okay. Ooh, there we go. And then what you're going to do after that I'm better is... better at that than me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we are. Maybe I'm going to get a little closer on my camera. And then you'll take your pen. And okay. you pick one up and you just place it where the color is like that. Okay, so I want the top so that the top is up. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just like that. Ta -da! You did it. That popping sound, people really like that. Yeah. Satisfying pop. It is kind of satisfying, yeah. No, it's not coming off. Sometimes the, because I have glue dots, they're called glue dots in yeah. there. And so the, the wax that it comes with, um, because it lasts longer than the wax. Gotcha. Um, sometimes it can be really sticky. Oh, you don't actually have to push that hard. I was pushing harder in the beginning. It's like a light tap. Yeah. This is very satisfying. Isn't it? I really like it. I feel like I'm not the biggest at like coloring books because that's a lot more time. Mm -hmm. um, and I get frustrated off of the lines, but I appreciate this. It's nice for my little OCD. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I started it when um, when COVID. It was like shortly after COVID, and yeah. like the veterinary world kind of blew up, right? Um, and wait times were excessive, and it just kind of felt like I don't know. There's a lot going on, so, you know, our mental health, like, started to, um, you know, play a part into things, mm -hmm. and I needed to do something else to help get my mind off of just emergency veterinary medicine. Yeah. And I saw some, I think it was either... Um, on Instagram or something. I don't know if I saw an ad or saw something with this and I thought I would try it and then I, I haven't looked back because I became addicted to it. Targeted, yeah. It worked. <laughs> yes. yes. I wonder if it's going to start popping up on mine now. Hopefully no. <laughs> it might if it's listening. And they <laughs> always listen.
confetti. But just like any craft that you start doing, you have to like get all the accessories that go with it. <laughs> I like these little handles. They have good real grip on them. The pens? Yeah. yeah. So it's, um, these pens are from an Etsy shop called Butterfly Effect Wares. Okay. Um, I, they are like a wife and husband from, I think they're in North Carolina, and they're a military family. Oh, fun. But she, like, hand pours them out of resin, and he turns them on a lathe. That's a cool little duo. Yeah. Do you think you can place diamonds and answer questions? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Try. Okay. Working on the placing the diamonds part. <clears throat> so, I only have a few questions um, from some of my subscribers. Um, one of them asks, um, I wanted to ask about overall nutrition for an adult indoor cat. Are there specific foods that you recommend. One of my cats is overweight and she's trying to limit a specific meal times during the day, but it's difficult. Um, she's grazing on dry food. Okay. Um, the cat is, oh, the brand is Blue Buffalo Dry Food for a seven plus year old. All right. Um, yeah, so food conversations, um, we can definitely have a long talk about this. I'm pretty passionate about it, as you know, but, mm -hmm. um, so when you're talking about picking a food, um, we want to pick a food that follows guidelines, um, you know, just like we have the USDA and that type of stuff. We want to make sure that we're doing food that follows the guidelines that are recommended. So in... The veterinary world, instead of the USDA, which is still relative to some things we do, but we also have um, what we call WSAVA, which is um, like the World Society for Veterinary Nutrition. Um, so there's a, they have a website, and you can go on and kind of look at what their recommendations are as far as questions you should ask the companies that you get your food from. Um, you know, what whether they do food trials, uh, whether their food has been tested, um, you know, what recalls they have, those types of things that they do have to tell you um, or they're supposed to put out in public. So those things are definitely important to ask. Um, when we're talking about food choices, uh, we want to make sure that we're using something that does extra food testing. So just because a food is basically made to follow certain guidelines set forth, it doesn't mean they actually have to go that extra mile and do food testing, which is pretty insane to me that we don't, we can make the food, but we don't actually have to test the food to know whether, um, you know, it's safe for our pets or not. Yeah, that's crazy. But, um, so you want to make sure that you're getting a food that has been tested and gone through food trials, um, because that way we know that your pet is not the test subject. Um, your pet's getting something that's been tested over years to not have any problems. So in that 
um, respect, I usually do not recommend Blue Buffalo, and that's purely because they do not go that extra mile and have food testing done. Um, the other problem that we see with foods like that, um, that are, you know, uh, grain free or high protein, and that's kind of how they're, what their selling features are, is um, they actually often do make pets overweight. And that's just because excess protein is going to be transferred over into fat. So if your cat is not, you know, running around in the jungle, they're not going to need as much protein as a cat in the wild would. Mm -hmm. So um, a big thing of that is any extra is going to be filtered into fat and that is going to make your cat overweight and it's going to be hard for them to um, <clears throat> lose weight. So that can be a battle that people fight with those grain free or boutique fad diets. So I would usually say go to um, the WSAVA and look at the guidelines and see um, what their recommendations are. <clears throat> so, and I'm sure you can link to their website and yeah. your stuff too. Um, as far as another aspect of what, what she's having going on is um, free feeding uh, or letting them kind of graze throughout the day. Um, the problem with that is some cats um, will just eat excessively, just like we would if we had a box of cookies sitting out for the day. We may eat more than if we had them like up in the cabinet and only got them out at certain times of the day. So some cats, if they get bored or they're just big foodies, they're going to eat more than they should and that's going to make them overweight. So I definitely usually recommend if we're talking about like trying to help our pets lose weight, um, a great thing to do for that is to um, feed them set meals. So ideally breakfast, breakfast and dinner, um, you know, morning and night, you set the food out for like 30 minutes. And if, you know, they want to eat whatever they want to eat, they will. If they're not hungry anymore, hopefully they'll stop eating. And then the rest of it you take up um, and then put it back down at night. And it, it is a transition period, but they do pretty good at figuring out, you know, okay, the food's only down for a certain amount of time. I need to eat it this time if I'm hungry and then, you know, go from there. Um, some cats, when you start doing that, you also have to give you know, three or four small meals instead of two bigger meals because they get kind of mad about it in the beginning. Um, so I think those are great ideas as far as like certain foods, you know, I do have ones that I prefer. Um, I try not to push that on clients. I tend to just say, make sure you're checking the guidelines and make sure you know what, you know, what you're feeding is tested and approved and everything like that. Um, so yeah, I would say that it's a short and not mm -hmm. short answer. Yeah, great. That's a good idea about like putting the food out for 30 minutes and then picking it up. That's a, I did not think about that. Yeah, and they will figure it out. There yeah. are also um, like actual food uh, bowls that you can get that have a little timer that goes off at a certain time every day. Yeah. Um, if your cat is one that's going to bother you at like three o'clock in the morning for food, <laughs> um, that is always a good thing because that kind of takes you out of the equation. It makes them beg the feeder for food instead of begging you for food. So that helps a lot of people too. Okay. Um, um, the, another question was, let's see. So Jen said, I would like to learn more about managing feline diabetes as my kitty Bindi was recently diagnosed and we are going through our daily routine of injections, etc. Any advice about that would be much appreciated. Okay. Diabetes is hard. Um, I think I'm going to need some more of these black beads. Oh, there we go. Um, so when we diagnose pets with diabetes, it's similar to humans with diabetes. You know, we do have to often give them injections once to twice a day um, to help with that. So um, that being said, the good thing about cats is that unlike dogs, cats can actually go in remission from diabetes. So if a cat is diagnosed with diabetes and all of the pathways are followed and it's early, you may be able to actually get that cat into remission and not have to give those injections um, 
if you can get their weight down, get them on an appropriate diet for their um, diabetes and things like that. So that's a pretty cool thing for cats that is not the same as in dogs. In dogs that are diagnosed diabetic, they're on insulin injections for the rest of their life and that just kind of is the way it is for those guys. Um, so cool thing about that for cats. Um, that being said, you do need to definitely stay on top of that. Um, if if it is recommended that your pet lose weight, um, often that is a complicating factor in diabetes, then definitely try and get the prescription diets that your vet offers if that's an option for you um, because those are going to help you with that um, to more quickly potentially reach that remission state and to just help your pet be a little bit healthier. Um, it also helps uh, stabilize their diabetes a little bit better. So even if we can't get them off of injections entirely, it helps to prevent them having really sick episodes that we call DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis, where they get really sick and they get in the hospital for a period of time. Um, so it definitely helps with that anyway. So I would say with diabetes, a big thing is keeping a very close eye on their nutrition, um, making sure you're doing the meals the way you're supposed to be doing, giving the injections the way that you're supposed to be doing. And hopefully if you do all of that appropriately, you'll be able to get um, at least to um, a state where they're at a stable uh, spot with their diabetes and you're not having a lot of scary episodes where they're passing out or getting really sick and vomiting and diarrhea and that type of stuff. So um, it's a close connection with your veterinarian throughout that initial diabetes diagnosis and it can be really frustrating. So make sure that you uh, um, have a good connection with your vet and you trust them and you're able to talk to them about any concerns that you have and um, obviously keep a close eye on your pet and make sure that you're not seeing any signs of uh, like vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, those types of things, because those can be signs that we're not regulating appropriately with the injections that we're doing. So um, I always recommend that. Um, and then, <clears throat> let's see, I guess the other components of diabetes, ideally making sure that they're getting injections. If they're doing it twice a day, making sure it's the same time every day. So if you're doing like 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., make sure you're doing it as close to that as possible. Um, that is one thing where I will say there's not a lot of space to have um, time lapses in that. So you wanna make sure that ideally you're doing it at the same exact time every day if possible. Um, other things with diabetics, if they are vomiting, obviously you need to get to your vet as soon as possible. Um, you should have like a rescue protocol with your vet of like, you know, if if they're not eating, should I give their insulin dose? Um, because sometimes the answer to that is yes, we still need to give them insulin, um, even if they're not eating. But depending on other things, like if they're vomiting, then sometimes the answer is no. Um, so definitely make sure that you have a protocol with your vet of like, what happens if, if my pet is not eating? Do I still give it? You know, making sure you know everything appropriately with that. Diabetes is frustrating because um, our cats can't tell us, you know, hey, I don't feel well today. We just have to go based on their clinical signs. So it is um, being very in tune with your pet, which can be difficult and frustrating also because cats tend to hide problems very well from us. So mm -hmm. they don't show us things as much as we wish they did. So, um, yeah. Um, let's see. And then I had another question. Um, so Sophie, she actually had three questions. Cool. <laughs> um, she has a six year old um, Jack Russell mix. All right. So um, her veterinarian actually recommended to have her teeth cleaned and put her under anesthesia she wanted to know how necessary is this and why is it so expensive yeah um so just like we should go um let's see what is m i'll do that one next it is 3799 it's a dark color there we go 
All right, so dental cleanings. Let me check one thing. Oh, that's a good bit of those. Okay, let's see. Check one thing real quick. I have a toddler who's in daycare, so I should make sure. Mm -hmm. okay, that. All right, so when we're talking about uh, dental cleanings, so just like with people, it is pretty important for your pets to have routine dental care, um, even more so given the fact that we're probably not brushing our pet's teeth every day. Um, I know even as a veterinarian, I don't do my pet's teeth every day. Um, so <clears throat> step one would be, yeah, ideally you're trying to brush your teeth as much as possible to help prevent buildup of plaque and things like that. But once that plaque is on there, there's really nothing that's going to get it off except for a cleaning and that's putting them under general anesthesia and the reason that we have to put them under general anesthesia for this um, is because we have to get under the gum line so we have to clean everything up underneath the gum line um, that can be a little uncomfortable for these guys so um, you know they they don't really understand that we're helping them all the time so it is important for us to to put them under anesthesia so we can clean appropriately. Um, there, there are a lot of like anesthesia free dentals and that seems to be a big thing in some places. I definitely do not recommend those because you're not going to be able to clean appropriately. Um, there are actually pets that are under anesthesia and when we are cleaning and looking at the underlying gum line and everything, they can actually still have a reaction where they chatter their teeth even under general anesthesia. So you can imagine if they were awake, how painful that would be and how we would not be able to clean that area or get to what we need to get to there. So um, it is very important for our pets to have dental cleanings the same as we were. You know, ideally that would be once a year. So after your pets, you know, two years old, I would say yearly cleanings are a great idea, especially in a small dog like a Jack Russell, um, because small dogs tend to build up plaque faster than bigger dogs for, um, you know, genetic reasons. So I would definitely say routine dental cleanings are a great idea. Um, it's, it's a good thing that your dog hasn't needed one until they're the age of six, but that being said, when they go in and do that, um, cleaning, there may be some damage to some of the teeth and there may need to be extractions or things like that that are performed. So I would not be surprised if that were the case. Um, but unfortunately, you know, our pets do need to be under general anesthesia for that, um, for their safety and um, for us to get the best cleaning that we can. I know it seems a bit drastic, but um, it's going to be the, the best care for them. Um, as far as the expense, um, you know, there are some companies, um, and I know some even general practices now do something where they um, allow for like yearly plans where you can get on a plan and have a dental cleaning involved with that plan. That doesn't usually always cover extracting the teeth, but it does help to decrease your um that like kind of all in one to be a little bit cheaper if you're paying a monthly fee to, and getting that dental cleaning once a year. So that may be an option. You can always ask your vet if they offer something along those lines. Um, otherwise, yeah, I mean, it usually does run, depending on where you're located, anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to even a couple thousand dollars for that. Um, and the reason being is because we're doing all the same things that uh, your human dentist is going to be doing um, as far as cleaning and things like that and we're doing it without insurance so it is a little bit more costly but we are you know using the same equipment and using um, doing the same types of things so it is rational that the costs are generally about the same um, and we want to make sure that your pets are safe so a lot of times that includes like pre-anesthetic blood work um x-rays those types of things and that's all you know trying to make sure that your your family members are as safe as possible for that anesthetic um procedure i will say that i i often say age is 
not a disease. So I make sure that people understand that just because your pet may be middle-aged, older, whatever, um, and they need to undergo anesthesia, if your vet is recommending it, there's probably a very good reason. Um, so definitely have that conversation with them if you're not comfortable with it um, and express those concerns and you know, hopefully they make you feel more comfortable about it. Um, personally, I will say, you know, even with my own pets going under anesthesia, I've never been 100% comfortable with it. I don't think we're ever going to be, but it's just a hope that we can be a little bit more comfortable and hopefully um, everything goes well, but usually it does. So um, yeah, I, see, I would say expense usually correlates with the fact that we're doing similar things to humans without insurance. For the most part so um yeah and then uh i guess another part of that is why is it important um so the teeth are associated with a lot of other parts of the body obviously that's the first thing that food's going to come into contact with um so there is always a chance of us having some other disease associated with that um, you can get heart disease we can have liver disease we can get other problems from um, having bad teeth, um, the teeth can actually, having bad teeth can actually also break down some of the bone in the mouth and we can get some serious dental disease, um, that can actually lead to them fracturing their jaw and stuff like that. So, um, <clears throat> you can also get a heart disease called endocarditis from terrible dental disease. So it can definitely be, um, it can affect our pets pretty severely if they have that dental disease and it can be uncomfortable. So we wanna make sure we take care of them as best we can. And uh, a lot of times that means anesthesia dentals, but uh, hopefully your vet can put that, put you at peace with that a little bit and make you feel more comfortable with it um, by talking through that with them. So definitely ask them about it, any concerns that you have and, and talk through that with them. Yeah, dental disease is no joke. Yeah, I've had a few broken jaws because of um, waiting too long to get dentals done. Um, and it's very unfortunate because usually by the time we get to the point where there's a, a broken jaw from severe dental disease, the, even the veterinary dentist um, will tell you there's nothing to attach to. So it's, it's difficult for us to Aww. fix that because there's no bone, there's no good bone left to adhere to and to help fix it so it yeah. can be very very sad yeah oh okay and then the second part of her jack russell question is um she's six years old she said that um and she has um white hairs around her precious face when is she considered a senior pet no <laughs> i love when they start to gray it's my favorite thing i know it's kind of also sad because we're noticing that they're getting older but i think it makes them all look so wise and kind <clears throat> um so when our pets are considered um seniors kind of varies depending on the breed because there's so much variation in there um with small dogs usually that is around 10 years old um generally across the board um jack russells actually are one of the dogs that i will say they will live a very long time which is good news for you um i have seen 20 year old jack russells that are still doing well so they are definitely a, a really hardy breed that can live a very long life, yeah. even if they're considered a senior at the age of 10. Um, some pets gray more prematurely than others. There's actually a couple studies talking about, you know, why that happens. Sometimes it can happen if they're like a high anxiety pet. Um, sometimes it can just be genetics, like with people in balding and graying and stuff like that. So, um you know, the main things that you're looking out for when they're considered a senior, making sure that they're able to get around comfortably. You're not noticing any signs of arthritis or pain. Um, you know, they're still acting happy and bouncy. You're not noticing um, <clears throat> any changes in their eating habits or urination habits or anything like that. So 
um, keeping a close eye on those things, but I would say she's probably not, at, at this point, I would not consider her a senior, probably more until she's in that, you know, eight to 10 year range, so. And I think you have at least another decade with her, if, I, if you know, she's a normal Jack Russell, so. Good news, Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> Um, her last question is, she wants a cat, but she's allergic. Are there any, this part I didn't understand her question. I didn't know if she meant, are there really any hyperallergenic cats or are there any ways to not be allergic to cats? Yeah. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> unfortunately not foolproof, um, what we're allergic to is usually the dander that's released by the pets, not their actual fur. Um, so that's why a lot of times when we say like a hypoallergenic dog that has, um, you know, uh, hair instead of fur, like poodles and things like that, um, there's still a risk of being allergic to those pets because they do still have some aspect of dander that happens. It's just that they usually have less and our body tends to have less of a reaction to them. So um, as far as like hypoallergenic cats, um, to my knowledge, the best best idea would be a sphinx, which is the hairless cats. I was going to say, um, what about a sphinx? Yeah, so they're, I mean, they're, they would be pretty... The closest thing that I think you're going to get to not being allergic to. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Um, with Sphinx cats comes a lot of potentials for heart disease and things like that, um, skin issues and all of that. So making sure that you're prepared and have researched um, everything that can go on with Sphinx cats before you get one because they are um, potential to be uh, high maintenance pets. Not always, but definitely good to look into. Um, there's also, you know, I I would warn against getting a cat and then trying this method that I'm going to talk about because it's definitely not foolproof, but Purina Pro Plan makes a new cat food um, called Live Clear, mm. and it's supposed to help with the dander buildup. So if someone in your home is allergic to cats and you have cats, feeding this food can help them to not re release as much dander. Um, and that can help with the allergens that people have with it. So if you do decide to, or you like find a, find a stray or something that you wanna keep, um, the Live Clear food is gonna be a really good idea for that. Um, so that's always an option too. Or like what if, or maybe like combining antihistamines like for people mm -hmm. with it. Yeah, so if you want to to be medicated long term, <laughs> I think that's rational. Like my, I know my husband has allergies to everything, including cats. Um, so he takes antihistamines a lot um, for for things of that nature too. So um, it's definitely rational that you could uh, take like some antihistamines uh, recommended by your doctor um, right. for those types of things. Uh, and some people do get more used to a certain pet's dander. So if you have the cat for a period of time, you may actually get more used to their dander. It's just, it depends on the pet and, and whether that's going to happen or to what degree. And it also depends on how allergic you are. So definitely an option. What is R? R is 414. Perfect. Yeah, those are all the questions. You're obviously a lot faster at this than me. <laughs> you can help me fill mine in if you want to, if you get done before me. Okay. <laughs> so what do you think of it? It's really fun. I like it. It's very gratifying. If it was tan, it would look like Emmett. Yeah. <laughs> I have a Frenchie. He is what they call piebald, so he's mostly white, and he has some like brown on his head and a little, little brown on his butt that's in the shape of a heart, so... <laughs> it is. It's real <laughs> cute.
we've had him since he was like three days old. Um, I definitely recommend if you want to get some sort of like a smushed face dog, you got to do a lot of research because um, they are high maintenance creatures. Yeah. And we see a lot in our vet world that they were not, um, you know, maybe we didn't do all the research part of that, so. It's definitely an art to this because I definitely did not get them exactly on there. Now that I'm putting more on there, I'm having a little difficulty getting them situated. of your first diamond painting. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. Good. Well, you get to keep that one. Ooh. <laughs> it's going to go in the fridge. Yay. Look at that. That's cute. I it like is. it. It's a pit bull. It's a nice sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I'm glad you had fun doing it. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I like that. It's a good relaxing, like little craft yeah well thanks for joining me today of course and maybe we'll get to do it again sometime yeah i'm up for it all right thanks for joining us today everyone and then um if you haven't already please consider uh, liking this video for more content like this and um, if you haven't already consider subscribing thanks bye